Oh, yeah, I know it's been a while. You caught me lounging a little bit, kind of sitting on a uh, camp chair that we are going to make in this video uh, out of leather and some wood and some cordage, basically. Uh, there will be some stitching. It's not a perfectly, uh, not a primitive sort of get up or piece of equipment, but it's more or less rustic and uh, with some some uh, few tools you can make something like this and it can be quite handy all right so here's the pattern that i'm using um that i actually traced off of a previous camp chair pattern um this will not fit on a eight and a half and uh, by 11 sheet of paper uh i may try and squeeze this down so that it fits but then if you do choose to take the pattern that i will put on my website so that people can download you will have to take it to your local printer shop to size it up so it's the proper size um it's a proper size for me at about five eight five nine two hundred and ten pounds or something like that um you can make it smaller or larger depending on who you are but that's on you i'm not going to do math on that um, but this is kind of what this looks like. There's little divots here on these sides to let me know where I put um, the stitches. And that's what this says here. Um, for the stitches start and stop at one quarter of allowance, meaning one quarter in from the edge. Um, and then here is the seat pockets. The seat pockets for this project uh, go on the opposite end meaning excuse me the meaning they go like that and that's where the legs sit in and you have to stitch it uh, accordingly on each uh, end or angle of the equilateral triangle that is our pattern okay so that's really how it fits together um, I'll do my best to try to make this a downloadable pattern for you all um, We'll see. Uh, again, I just do this for fun of it. I'm not getting paid. Nobody's really putting anything in the ducket, so there's no real incentive for me to make sure this is expedient. Not saying anything other than you get it when I get an opportunity to put it up there if you're interested. Otherwise, just make an equilateral triangle with rounded edges, and you can make your own pattern. All right, so we have our uh, leather seat here. I've already scored, if you can see, where I'm going to start uh, placing stitches in based on our, uh, our uh, uh, leg cups <clears throat> that go on the opposite side. So with the veggie tan leather, what you do is you need to get it wet a little bit and then you can score into it and so i have my scoring tool you can eyeball it it doesn't have to be perfect if it's camping or rustic this is just for aesthetics to be honest right so i've already marked here where they start and they end um uh basically taking my uh my tool my uh cups here and just kind of marking them where they should start and they should end kind of loosely so all I get to do is take my scoring tool it's set at a quarter inch uh, from the end and I'm gonna find where I'm gonna start and all you got to do is just carefully kind of score it now this is two ounce leather so it's not very thick that means I don't need to go very deep with this so I can probably score maybe twice and it should be just good enough. Okay. So again, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, yeah. So we just want to follow this around and just to give a guideline. Okay. Cause at the end of the day, what we're going to do is we're just going to find out where my end point is. And sometimes it helps to kind of mark it a little bit. So you know where to stop. And then, boom, I know where to stop. Basically, we're just making a pocket. 
where we're gonna sew. And so now I have to, um, uh, basically glue these pieces in place like so, okay? And what they will do is, and they'll, they'll basically make pockets for the uh, legs to fit into, okay? So this real concept is real easy, it's real simple. You just need to get light enough leather. Um, but we're not there yet because right now I want to stain this and make this a different color. And then I'll start poking my holes uh, using a different tool so that we can start uh, lacing it all together. All right, so uh, what I want to do is, you know, vegetable tan cowhide comes out as like a, I don't know, an off yellow off peach sort of color in general and then of course when you get it wet it's turn wants to turn brown but what i want to do right now is i want to dye it just for uh aesthetic purposes you don't have to it's up to you i could i could i could etch all kinds of stuff in hell i could make i could put my monogram on there i could stamp all kinds of filigrees and i can make it look real pretty if i wanted to no I'm not gonna do it not today not for this project but just so you know um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take some of my dye here and my little dye brush or swab or whatever you want to call it and i'm on the furry side or the side that was next to the skin and i'm just going to start to kind of you know just give it some give it some color I guess um, again you, you, you can take it however you want to you can make it whatever color you want to many different dyes come in different many 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 different colors um, and uh, apparently this brand which is this pro dye here I don't know if you can see it or not um, this is supposed to be more eco-friendly some of the previous dyes if you are about that life cool um for the back side i'm not that concerned to be honest because no one will hardly ever see it but if you want to be thorough about it fine that's on you and just kind of make it like that okay and then i try to get the edges a little bit And meaning I just kind of go along the edges just to make the edges and yeah you might want to wear some gloves or whatever so I'm just dying everything at this stage here just to color it you don't you don't have to do this again but it's just if you get to that point or you're at a point where you want to colorize or make stuff look pretty you know and as you can see it starts to mix on the other side which is the the hair side this is where the hair is on a nice smooth side So this would be a dark brown or whatever. I could water this down so it'd be a little caramel colored if I wanted it to be, or I can make it hell, USMC black, marine black if I wanted it to be. Um, it's up to you. Our, t our artistry is is up to you. However, you want to hook it up. Don't care. None of my business. So cool. So I can kind of circle it around. 
It's a dark brown now, it's a chocolate, milk chocolate brown. Yeah. Funny thing, we're very obsessed with colors in this freaking country here that we live in. Everything's gotta have a, a name for a mall and turpentine or whatever the hell or fuchsia. You know, it's just pink. Come on now. It's brown. Come on now. So um, I've got the other pieces, the cups that I need to paint too. Now something to keep in mind is this. So when I flip this over, this is the hide, this is the part of the cowhide that was next to the flesh. This is the rough part. There's a rough part on these parts as well. We want to match the rough part to the rough part so that the smooth part or the hair part is is upwards okay so I'm gonna paint these as well um, just for consistency sake but I'm not gonna focus so much on putting too much and wasting too much of my valuable uh, dye on the backside because you will hardly ever see it but this way this way this excuse me this way is probably the best way this is how it's supposed to be laid out to be honest okay so this is this is what's going on and I'm freaking out I suck at the camera stuff because I'm I'm the only one doing it how about that um so I have to go here barely this is stupid you know Maybe yeah, I am stupid, I don't know. But really, but anyways, I hope y'all get the idea. Okay, that's the whole point. Um, so this, this is how this is gonna lay on. And we're going to stitch these pieces onto here. Easy peasy. It's actually, the concept is extremely easy. The work is what's hard. Okay, so the next step here is I want to I want to glue on um, the uh, leg cups to the back side of our seat here. Like that. Okay, because I've already scored in where I'm going to start to um, poke holes in and saddle stitch the um, the leg pegs on. Uh, excuse me, the leg cups onto here. Now I want to put them in place so I can actually make sure I make the holes accordingly. Um, again, this is, this is, it's rustic, but it's not primitive, okay? Let's just put it that way. I mean, I guess you could use um, pine pitch if you were in a pinch or, there's multiple different ways you can do this. You can poke the holes and then drive the holes or make markers with the holes with each one of these and then kind of loosely stitch them together. Many different ways you can do it. Um, just, I'm, I'm kind of cheating. And you know, you can use um, uh, rubber cement. Um, I, depending on the project, rubber cement isn't the best. I'm going ahead and using some super glue here. And I just want to do the edges here. I just want to kind of kind of just put a bead uh, on the edges here so that this can go ahead and stick and the super glue doesn't always I mean rubber cement doesn't always um, hold the best when you need a nice tight bond for this type of work so I'm just putting a little bit of the super glue in here I kind of like the gel stuff um, so because it's easier to control and then um, I've got my weight here, which is my little marble slab. And what, what that offers me is the ability to kind of compress the seal of the rubber cement, or excuse me, the, uh, it allows me to compress the seal of the super glue <clears throat> so that it'll go nice and tight, like so. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna start punching holes through so I can start 
creating the holes for my saddle stitching. All right, so I have a, an awl a, to poke holes in the leather, some metal modern piece. Um, I like to use this one because it's got, it's kind of like a, a spear tip, somewhat triangular. And what I'm doing is I'm poking the holes into where I'm going to put my stitching. And I like to do this kind of like at a um, 45 degree angle. And I've got this on top of my, uh, on top of my, uh, I might not be able to see this on camera. But I've got it on my cutting board. I got it on another leather piece so I don't push through onto my cutting board. And uh, I just go through and I hold this at about a 45 degree angle and I just kind of, kind of punch through and kind of all it in there. And on the other side, there will be some holes here to indicate where I can kind of go through the other way or punch through with a circular awl. But that's just to make the holes um, as I go all the way around uh, my the, the outline that I made previously. And again, I'm just going to go through here and just... <clears throat> Punching this hole through, and and that's why using the glue kind of helps, so that I can at least uh, permeate both pieces, and then that'll give me an opportunity to lace through both pieces without uh, doing a whole bunch of finagling and and a bunch of other stressful type of stuff. It could be done the other way without glue. It's just going to take more time. It can be a little bit more fretting when again especially if you're just you if you're using this veggie tan leather so um it'll be great to use um weaved canvas or weaved dog bane or um nettles or something like that we probably wouldn't we we would need to go through that it would be just a simple me simple method of stitching but because this is very this is very tough material dense material um, we have to kind of do it this way so and it, you know I mean hopefully I'll be able to get a chance to make another video using those materials we'll see and I'm trying to do this about quarter of an inch apart more or less again it's about <clears throat> I'm not going to be too precise So there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch through one more time and then cinch it up. Widen the hole so the thread goes through quite evenly or easily I should say. And then on the back side I can go ahead and push the thread through. that and then now I'm on this side of it I can go out and possibly put another one through yeah and then take this one on this side and pull it push it through and maybe use my awl to make it a bigger hole so I don't have to struggle. Like that. And then what that gives me the ability to cinch up hard. And then now on these two bits here I just wind up around my hands and I can kind of cinch up hard and so I'm going to continue doing this whole stitch around what we got going on here until we finish um, when we get when we get to the finish point I'll show you how I finish off and then um, I've done the other stitches for the other uh, pockets um, for the stools 
and uh, we're we're about almost done for the most part. We just make it work. So that's kind of how you do it. So we're about at the end of the saddle stitching stage. Um, and like I said before, um, I did videos on how to saddle stitch um, when you're dealing with leather. And uh, I'm not gonna go through it too, in, too much or too entirely, um, but this is how we do it. And so I'm on opposite ends and I'm going to, and I can use um, sticks or whatever to really get a good cinch, you know, kind of pull it tight, right? I can give it a good cinch. Now, to tie this off, and I'm gonna tie it off on the bottom end here, okay? This is where the pockets are. Meaning, I'm gonna take this end, which I know is on top, and I'm gonna go back through one of the uh, holes that I made prior to. And I'm just going to take my awl, and I'm going to uh, make a little bit more of a hole just so it's easier for me and then um, pop that through that's it and then now I have both ends on this side like that okay and then all I got to do is just basically make a knot not a big deal nothing real dramatic I'm gonna do an overhand to a double overhand knot and then pull this tight and then I'm going to do a single overhand knot just to lock it off. I might even do a dub another double overhand knot just to be safe. Doesn't really matter but however you choose to do it but that's just to lock it off. And so that's pretty much done. And then I can take a pair of scissors and cinch it off. And that's about right. And then I can tie this off. This is my extra cordage or my sewing, my saddle stitching cordage. And I can put a knot at the very end here and I can start another project if I want to. Um, I might not do that because this is a single year project, project but that's what I could do. Um, but at the end of the rate, at, at any rate, you know, so this is the pockets that we have made for our legs. And this should support um, what we need to do. And, you know, again, it's just real quick and easy, real quick and simple. Kind of uh, triangular, equilateral triangular um, stitching around here. And uh, we'll, we'll fit the legs in. And that's, that, that's really it. I mean, there is some work involved if you're going to make a leather seat like this. Um, but for the most part, once you get past this part, it's done. And it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, so now I'm processing the uh, camp chair legs here. And I'm using a blade here, and I'm actually filming this one-handed. I think you get the idea. What I'm trying to do is I hold this at an angle and I chop down on my cutting board here just to roughly shape it. It doesn't have to look pretty, but what we don't want is we don't want these sharp edges uh, in the uh, pocket or the cup of the seat because it will wear away the leather eventually over time. So we want to kind of round the edges out uh, so this sits nicely into the seat and it won't wear out so much. So you could do the other ends like that if you'd like to. I might put uh, a little uh, rubber plugs on the bottoms. I uh, don't know. Um, I might leave it as is uh, just for a quick and dirty job. But yeah, so this is the next process is to kind of um, uh, kind of shape out the edge that goes into the pocket. These are inch and quarter, one and a quarter inch uh, in diameter wood dowels. Um, and this should support my weight. All right, so we, sh <clears throat> we shaped one end <clears throat> of our 
legs here so they'd have some of a taper again you could sand this and make it all nice and smooth and this and that other thing it doesn't really matter but what we don't want is to have like the sharp edges like this that will probably eventually bite through the uh the leather um and again i could i could uh smooth the edge around here if i wanted to probably even put one of like a little rubber cane cap on here if i was going to use this indoors exclusively um that's always an option here now these are one and a half one and a quarter inch in diameter wooden dowels um, i'm not quite sure what kind of wood it is but i'm just staining them right now to give it um just kind of a rustic feel um <clears throat> this these dowels the one and quarter inch wooden dowels supports my current weight at 110. some of the other camp chairs that i've made exactly like this uh when i was actually i've, I've actually lost a bit a considerable amount of weight uh when i was pushing like one 240 maybe 250 this could these could support me uh and with no problem uh but I want you to be careful with that and you, you heavier people out there if you choose to do this then you need to make sure you find something quite robust that you think will support your weight i don't want nobody impaling themselves and especially it's not a, it's definitely wouldn't be you wouldn't be impaled in a good place uh so you must be careful um and the same thing if, if you're if you're lighter weight you know obviously if you use a big robust stick it should support you if you're like 110, 120, 90 pounds, that's one thing. But um, just for safety's sake, you know, you don't want to be using some spindly sticks and end up getting one up your sphincter, okay? So I'm going to say that again. You need to make sure you're safe if you're going to choose to build one of these so you don't get one of, one of these shafts up your tank or nothing like that. So uh, at one quarter one and one quarter of an inch in diameter uh this supports has supported my weight from 110 up to 140 145 so there you go i just wanted to give you that out there don't be just thinking one size fits all because it's not going to be the case at all um you definitely want to bust through your stitches that you made in your seat your leather seat which is the reason why we taper the ends even if it's just rustic tapering so I'm just going ahead and just kind of giving this a little um, little stain here just to give it kind of a rustic look a little bit. But other than that, that's pretty much done. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I might spray this with polyurethane. I have atomic wax here um, for the leather seat. And this is a leather balm or atomic wax. It just basically gives it a sheen to the leather once you've stained it. Not a big deal, not a must have or anything like that. But um, that's gonna how I'm gonna finish it. And then I'm gonna show you how to wrap it, how to sit it in there, and we're gonna give it a test. All right, so this is one way you can kind of, um, kind of wrap this up and carry it. There's many different ways you can probably do this. Um, <clears throat> I've got about 12 feet of 550 cord, kind of on the thicker version. Uh, just because it's strong and durable, I mean, I could obviously uh, use different cordage is or lashings uh, as I need to um, based on the type of natural cordage that I choose to use to do this. But again, this is pretty, it's rustic, but it's not primitive, if you will. It's a primitive concept, but it's not made primitively. I didn't harvest these pegs. You know, I didn't weave or tan this 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 leather, um, and I did certainly didn't stitch it in a real primitive way at all. But just to give you a concept, uh, this is kind of what we're working with, and I'm just going to show you kind of how I put it together. Okay. Um, what I will do is what I would like to do, and hopefully this is on camera enough. Is these are the ends, the tapered ends go into the pockets okay they will fit into the pockets like this okay so that's the goal that's the idea um so i want them and we're all in one direction and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do kind of 
I don't know, three quarters of the way down. I'm just gonna kinda do a, uh, how do you say, a, uh, I'm just gonna do a, uh, a strangle knot, something. So halfway down the middle of one of these, I'm just gonna do a strangle knot. You could do a clove hitch, doesn't really matter, whatever your preference is. And that's just to get this to, to get tight onto it. So yeah, I kind of want this just to kind of be cinched on here. Um, we're just going to cinch this on. You can adjust it later. But all I'm really going to do is, once I cinch this on here, is just wrap. It's not that hard. It's not, I mean, this is, there's all these different knots you could do. Nah, just, just wrap it around. Because this has to have some way to adjust, especially your weight. Right? So I'm going to adjust this. Or just wrap this around. And yeah, you can kind of take the ends of these and put them in the middle if you feel so inclined. Just to keep everything copacetic and tie it in, right? Let's keep this wrapped in. Again, there's not much else you need to do. There's nothing more so sophisticated than that. I'm just going to take this and just tie this in. And that'll be about it, right? Because this is really meant to be kind of quick on the go, something practical to set. And so what's going to happen is you're going to make this tripod here, okay? So I may have to adjust my camera angle a little bit. But that's what the cups are for, right? I'm going to get up underneath the camera here. All right, so that's what these cups are for that we put into our leather seat, you see. So these fit right over the top of these in a tripodal uh, configuration. And it should just sit nicely like that. And then as you sit on these, as you sit on this, this will adjust. And again, oh, again, I can't reiterate this because I don't want nobody getting injured if they choose to do this. Um, this is an inch and one quarter, one inch and a quarter. Okay, one and a quarter inch diameter wooden dowel that will support my weight. Um, I'm at one. I, I'm at uh, five eight two ten. Uh, I have was at one point about 240, 245. And I still could sit on one of these with the same wooden dowel. So you will have to move up or down according to your individual weight. Um, I don't know what the actual scientific, you know, ratio or some mathematician out there, y'all can figure that out if you want to. But uh, based on this type of wood, and again, I don't even know what kind of wood it is. I don't know if it's oak or pine or what, um, poplar or whatever. But um, just going to regular hardware store and getting one and a quarter inch in diameter uh, wooden dowels seems to work for me at you know at my weight and uh, structure. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, try and sit down on this and see what happens. Hopefully, I don't hurt myself. <laughs> Okay, there you go. There I am, sitting down on it. Um, I feel pretty comfortable with this. It feels pretty solid. It's kind of nice. Yeah, and it it can it shifts a little bit with your weight. And again, you can adjust 
the cordage ring that we had, uh, you know, up or down, depending on how you how high you want to use it. Um, I have one part going in between my legs, which is a nice little say. It kind of cups, it cups your 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 your, your seat quite well. You know, um, there is no back seat that you can lean on, so it's not a, a lounging type chair or comp chair. I'm sure you could rig something if you were ingenuitive enough. But for the most part, yeah, this works. This will this will work as a quick and dirty one as far as a camp chair is concerned. So. Um, yeah, uh, this would be a success. Again, not very primitive per se. I want to go there next time. Uh, it just would cost, it just, the problem with the, a lot of the primitive stuff is it causes wear and tear on the, uh, the natural resources that we have. And I don't want to be the one to, to extract from the environment when I don't have to. Um, Again, it's much easier, you know, living in an apartment building, that's one thing, but it's another thing when you have your own property and you have your own space and, you know, you have your own woods and things like that. So, um, I'm hoping you are able to use your imagination. I'm hoping you're able to um, fill in the blanks, per se. I hope I don't have to spell it out. Uh, again, I, I would like to build something much more robust, but that's when I have the resources to do it. So anyways, um, that's just building a camp chair. Um, it supports me quite solidly. It feels really good, actually. It's kind of nice. Um, it's quite sturdy. Kind of lightweight for the most part if you're going to do some hiking or something like that. But again, you can just bring the seat and the cordage or rely on the, the landscape for the cordage and just bring the seat. And you can find any old tree in the woods and make your own, you know, wherever you're hiking to or camping to. Um, so maybe that's less weight in your pack. There's some ideas, you know. Um, but anyways, there you go. It's camp seat. <laughs>